Hello everyone, today we shall study about suture materials and suturing techniques. Aims of suturing are to hold a flap over the wound, reapproximating the wound edges, protecting underlying tissues from infection or other irritating factors, preventing post-operative hemorrhage. And the instruments needed for suturing are needle holder. It is used to grab onto the suture needle and we can see here this is the needle holder and it has got this serrated end so that the needle is held firmly and other instruments that are needed are forceps these are used to hold the tissue gently and to grab the needle and suture scissors these are used to cut the stitch from the rest of the suture material this is needle holder forceps suture scissors and surgical needles surgical needle has a basic design composed of three parts the eye body and the point the eye it is the sliced end of the needle and the body curved body and the point the eye which is sliced and permits the suture and needle to act as a single unit to decrease trauma. These days, uh, these days the needles are coming without the eye. These are sliced. Previously, there, there were definite hole in the eye which was traumatic. And the body, it is the widest point of the needle and is also referred to as the grasping area. The body comes in number of shapes, round, oval, rectangular, trapezoid or side flattened. And the point which runs from the tip to the maximum cross-sectional area of the body, the point also comes in a number of different shapes, conventional cutting, reverse cutting, side cutting, taper cut or blunt. And this uh, is a surgical needle and shapes of the needle teeth these are this come in different shapes like three by eight circle one by two circle straight and specialty in this three by eight circle we can see here um, this one quadrant is one by four and greater than one by four but less than um, one by two that is three by four this is the three by eight needle and this is a one by two needle this lower one this is a one by two needle and there are eye needles and slaced needles eye needles are more traumatic thread passes through the eye and double thread pulled through the tissue so that is more traumatic and it tends to unthread itself easily that's a disadvantage and uh, these days we have got this type of needles these are switched on needles and they're much less traumatic however they are expensive and needle and suture acts as a single unit in this type of needles and points of needles they can be tapered blunt and these tapered needles are automatic and used in internal organs the end is pointed towards the end and they can be conventional cutting or reverse cutting. We all need to understand the basic difference between the conventional cutting and reverse cutting. In the conventional cutting, the cutting is, is on the inside of the circle and it is more traumatic. We will see how it is more traumatic than the reverse cutting. In the reverse cutting, the cutting is, is on the outside of the circle and it is less traumatic than the conventional cutting. Let's see how is it. In the conventional cutting, the inner circle, mm, we can see here, while we are suturing, the inner circle is the cutting. This is the inner circle is the cutting is, and this may cut the soft tissue border, and the suture may come off, causing tissue trauma here. But in reverse cutting, is the outer edge of the circle is cutting, outer edge of the circle is cutting. So here, this is the blunt edge, so it will not cut the tissue, so it is less traumatic. Cutting is is this one, the outer circle. That's why reverse cutting is preferred, and this is the taper cut. Taper cut has a um, Cross section round, but it slightly points towards the end. Now, characteristics of suture material they can be absorbable or non absorbable, monofilament or multifilament, natural or synthetic. Absorbable sutures, these are self absorbed in the body and they do not require removal after a certain period of time, whereas these non absorbable sutures should be removed after five or seven days. Absorbable sutures are the polyglycolic acid suture and polygalactin suture. Polyglactin suture, cat gut suture, polydioxanone suture, and non absorbable sutures are proline, nylon, polyester, sealed, stainless steel suture. And this is a monofilament cat gut, whereas this is a multifilament, this is a multifilament cat gut, and this one is a monofilament cat gut. <coughs> Sorry. Monofilament consists of a single filament like this nylon. This is a monofilament suture. Also, like <coughs> this polypropylene and polydioxanone. These all are monofilament, they consist of a single thread. Whereas the multifilament or braided sutures are the poly polyglycolic acid, PZA sutures, silk sutures, polyester sutures. These all are the multifilament or braided sutures. And monofilament versus multifilament, these all have their own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, braided or multifilament sutures provide better knot security, whereas monofilament sutures provide better passes through tissues and they're less traumatic. Monofilament sutures elicit lower tissue reaction compared to braided sutures. And also, multifilament. Sutures threads will generally have greater diameter than the monofilament sutures, which will cause more trauma to the tissue. Natural sutures, 
silk and catbird sutures are the natural sutures where all other sutures are synthetic in nature and absorbable suture materials that are broken down by various processes inside the tissue either by hydrolysis or proteolytic enzymatic degradation and depending upon the material the process can be from 10 days to 8 weeks and they are used in patients who cannot return for suture removal or in internal body tissues if the suture has to be used inside the body tissues and layer upon layer other sutures are placed so in the internal part the absorbable suture materials are used and occasionally absorbable sutures can cause inflammation and be rejected by the body then rather than absorbed because these are foreign particles inside the body and they are highly undesirable in the aesthetic areas where aesthetic is concerned removable sutures or non-absorbable sutures are preferred non-absorbable sutures non-absorbable sutures are used either on skin or closure where the sutures can be removed after a few weeks or in areas of tension where absorbable sutures will not suffice they cause less scarring because they provoke less immune response and are used where cosmetic outcome is important i mentioned it earlier that where aesthetic is concerned non-absorbable sutures are used and they must be removed after a certain time or left permanently principle of suturing the needle should be grasped at approximately one third of the distance from the eye and two third from the point it should be grasped approximately one third distance from the eye and two third distance from the point this is the correct position to hold the needle the needle should enter the tissues perpendicular to the tissue surface this is the correct way this is the correct way to enter the tissue rather than this because the angle is very very less and here the needle is entering the tissue exactly in 90 degrees and that is desirable and the needle should be passed through the tissues along its curve the root of the needle through the tissues should be along its curvature as shown in this figure the path of the needle should be along its curve not like this where you penetrate poke here and there and there this will cause more trauma and healing would also be compromised the needle should be passed at an equal depth and distance from the incision on both sides here the distance is less on this side there is greater this side this should not be there the tissue margin should be approximated well before suturing and while suturing the suture should be done from movable to the fixed tissue this is a flap raised here from this flap towards the fixed tissue the suture should be done not like this where not like this where the fixed tissue is penetrated first and the movable tissue is done later this is not desirable and from the thinner to the thicker tissue from the thinner to the thicker tissue like this the suturing should be done and this is the wrong technique because this will come off when trying to suture and from the deeper to the super deeper to superficial tissue this is the correct way from deeper to superficial tissue the suturing should be done and tissues must never be closed under tension what happens when we close under tension the tissues are compressed here and they will undergo necrosis and the knot should never lie on the incision line because this will cause the weakening of bacteria and other pathogens and infections are very likely if the knot is in the incision line and the incision should be placed at the greater depth than at the distance from the incision so as to avoid the wound margins the wound margins if uh, the wound margins should be inverted if inverted and they are within the sutures the necro tissue necrosis uh, can be caused inside the wound so the sutures should be placed at a greater depth than the distance from the incision and the completed knot must be tight form and tight so that slippage will not occur and to avoid weakening of bacteria knots should not be placed in incision lines knots should be small and the inch cut short and is a long long inch coming off they will cause contamination and infection sutures should bring together the wound edges but should not cause indenting or blanching of the skin because the blood supply is impeded and the infection and scarring will be there and sutured skin should roll slightly outward from the wound eversion should be there rather than inversion skin sutures usually removed in five days and intraoral sutures are removed in seven days suturing technique simple interrupted suture there are different types of sutures simple interrupted suture and continuous suturing in continuous suturing also there is simple continuous and interlocking and mattress suture horizontal mattress vertical mattress we shall see one by one simple interrupted stitch it is the most common and the simplest to perform let's see here this is the simple interrupted before giving another incision before giving another suture though suture is cut and another suture is completely 
unrelated to the first previous sutra. It is called interrupted because the sutra thread is caught between each individual stitch. If the wound looks like it is becoming infected, a few sutures can be removed easily without disrupting the entire closure. This is the main advantage of simple interrupted stitch. And can be, it can be used in all areas, but it may take longer to place than a continuous suture. See, it is a very tedious task to make one incision and place a knot there, another incision, place a knot, place a knot. So when there is a long area to resuture, this is not desirable, but see. This is an example of simple interrupted suture. And continuous suture, it is quicker, but it risks failing if the suture is caught in just one place. See, this is a continuous stitch. And if it is caught in just one place, let it be here. And all the suture will fail and the, there is possibility of need of resuture. And sutures are placed again and again without tying each individual suture. And it is the technique of choice to help stop bleeding from skin eases, for example, in a scalp laceration. And continuous stitches also are of two types. These are simple continuous and interlocking. We can see here simple continuous and interlocking. In simple continuous, this is the simple continuous suture. Simple continuous, whereas this is interlocking stitch. Interlocking con continuous stitch. And the examples are given here. Vertical and horizontal mattress stitch. These are also interrupted, but these are more complex and specialized for averting the skin and distributing tension. It is a good choice when the skin is are difficult to avert. This is the horizontal mattress. Here is got the vertical mattress. First one layer and then another layer. This is vertical mattress and this is horizontal mattress. And other stitches or suturing techniques include figure of eight stitches. That is figure of eight stitches. And this is subcuticular stitch. You go inside the skin and within the skin, within the below the cuticle, below the skin only you give the suture. And this is subcuticular stitch. Knots. Now let's discuss about the knots. The, the a suture knot has three basic components, the loop, knot, and the ears. This is the loop, this one is the loop, this is the knot, and these two are the ears. And the loop is created by the knot. The knot is composed of a number of tight throws. Each throw represents a wave of the two stains, and the ears, which are the cuttings of the suture. This. And the types, the basic types of knots are surgeon's knot, square knot, and granny knot. The square knot and granny knot, they look very, very similar, but what their difference, we shall discuss later. A square knot, it is formed by wrapping suture around the needle holder once in opposite direction between the ties. Granny knot tied in one direction, followed by a tie in same direction and a third tie in opposite direction. One direction, same direction and third tie in opposite. It sounds a bit confusing, but um, after we see the figure, we understand. Surgeon's knot, two throws of the suture around the needle holder on the first tie, and the one throw in the opposite direction and the second tie. Surgeon's knot. See, this is an example of surgeon's knot. Two throws in the first tie, and it is tied, and single throw in the opposite direction in the second tie. This is the correct way to make the surgeon's knot. And the difference between the square knot and granny's knot is that in this square knot you can see this black thread this black thread is going down going from the downside in both both sides but in this granny knot the black thread is going from the upper side in this side and from the lower in this side this is the basic difference between the granny's knot and square knot let's see it is given more clearly here the crossings are opposite in granny's knot granny knot and in square knot the crossings are same and in surgeon's knot, there are two throws and followed by a single throw opposite. And the completed knot must be tied, form and tied so that slippage will not occur. To avoid wicking of bacteria, knots should not be placed in incision lines. Knots should be small and the ends cut short. And sutures should bring, the, bring together the wound edges but should not cause indenting or blanching of the skin since the blood supply may be impeded and thus increase infection and scaling. Sutured skin should roll slightly outward from the wound. And skin sutures usually removed in 7 days. And intraoral sutures are removed in Skin sutures are usually removed in five days, okay, and intraoral in seven days because the intraoral sutures have a, you know, these are very delicate, so it needs more time to heal. And suture removal to remove sutures, one tail of the suture should be grasped with forceps and pulled gently towards one side of the wound. One tail of the suture should be grasped with forceps, and it is gently pulled towards one side of the wound, and this will elevate the knot. You can see the knot has been elevated here, and then the opposite side of the suture then should be caught with stitch cutters or fine suture scissors immediately under the knot. And the suture can then be pulled out of the tissue by pulling towards the opposite side of the wound. And this is again repeated here. Skin sutures are usually removed in seven days and intraoral sutures are removed. Skin sutures are usually removed in five days and intraoral sutures in seven days. That's it about the sutures and suturing techniques, suture materials. Please share and subscribe if you love this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.